as concert goers started to pass out and pass away while rapper Travis Scott was on stage last Friday night in Houston. Private medical crews were on scene when the scope of that tragedy started to grow exponentially. Paramedics from the city of Houston had trouble communicating and coordinating response with those private crews, according to reports in the USA Today. How would the flow of vital information needed to save lives work if such a disaster were to develop here? With us live now to answer that question is Captain Parker Wilborn from the Metro Fire Department serving Sacramento. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Now, people who do what you do become firefighters, become paramedics for private companies, obviously have a passion for helping people in the worst of times. The same if you're working for a city. After the towers fell on 9-11, the whole country learned about the additional problem that day of communication confusion between all the different agencies trying to help there. Now reports are emerging that city units had trouble coordinating response with the private units. They were at that deadly Travis Scott concert Friday. Our area has just hosted a very successful aftershock festival here. Private units would start out working an event like that, right? Yeah, that's correct. Sometimes uh, these private ambulance companies would um, would provide that, that EMS uh, service at that uh, event, yes. And then if a crisis were to develop at a massive festival or a gathering here, how do city crews start getting added into the mix? And then who's in control or what we lay folks sometimes hear, who's incident command? And do the private crews leave or work in concert with city crews? So this is a massive topic and I'll try and scale it down just a little bit for you. Um, but yes, so usually in something like that, we're going to get multiple calls into our fire dispatch center for a response. Uh, we would utilize Metro Fire and all of the surrounding agencies. Actually, it's the nationwide model for emergency response. It's the incident command system. Uh, so that's a scalable emergency response system based on managing what we're trying to accomplish um, based on our priorities. And obviously the highest priority being saving lives. Um, so through that ICS system, we also have multi interagency coordination. Uh, so that might uh, bring in resources that are either affected or not affected by that incident. And then we're going to work together to coordinate resource ordering, placement of those resources, emergency response activities. Uh, we have a countywide disaster response plan um, that puts part the, all the parts and pieces together uh, regionally. And we can also set up an emergency response uh, operations center with Cal OES. Um, so all of this is done through what we utilize as the master uh, mutual aid agreement. And that's a statewide agreement. So we use that agreement up and down the state, for instance, such as the, you know, the large scale wildfires or, or, or whatever. Uh, where we need more resources from other agencies. So we obtain those emergency resources from those non-affected jurisdictions. Um, and we also have local agreements uh, with surrounding agencies. And that's nice because they're actually already familiar with the system. Uh, one of the big things that Metro Fire and the local Sa Sacramento area have as an advantage also is uh, a regional type three incident management team. So we uh -huh. actually have a total team that can come in and uh, order those resources, get the allocations needed, um, and, and that's at the local level. We have the capability to scale that up all the way up to the federal level or all the way just keeping it local. Um, so that team has actually been dispatched out already a number of times, um, whether it be planned or unplanned, uh, for wildfires that were on the bridge incident um, or the civil unrest in the Sacramento area. So we utilize that too. And a lot of those same folks are on the FEMA Urban Search and Rescue Task Force 17, uh, uh -huh. which is our local team. Uh, so that's at the federal level. So as you can see, there's a broad range of uh, uh, this is a it's a, obviously a huge topic. We have two different radio systems. We've got our 800s, which is what we use locally. Uh -huh. And then if it needed to scale up, we can go to a VHF. So um, locally, everybody responds uh, on these radios. Uh, including our partners over at American Medical Response, the AMR. So they okay. are our private ambulance company that helps support the 911 system uh, in this county. And so they're already on that system. So we've already taken that into account. Uh, and then if obviously we needed other uh, statewide resources or resources from that side of the state, we needed to scale it up to a type one team. Boom, we got these statewide uh, VHF raiders. Everybody on the state is on these, uh, including other private ambulance companies as well. Let me ask uh, you so. about the, the radio system that you just referenced. In the middle of what could be a very chaotic situation, you talked about the incident commander. Is that the person that is sending out all of the information to the private crews and the other departments that may be on scene? Or is that all fun funneling through the dispatch center to sort of get the overall picture of all the assets that have arrived? 
So our dispatch center would be in charge of, of ordering those resources. And that order is gonna come from the incident management uh, team uh, or the incident commander at that point. And we can, uh, in something like Houston, we'd be setting up what's called a unified command. Uh, and that means we'd have um, law enforcement and fire in the same camp leading that charge. Uh, we op obviously have two different modes and objectives, but they two, the two come together. And uh, it's very important that we're working together with the counterparts that are there uh, so we don't have uh, any breakdown uh, in communications or um, logistics or planning or resource ordering at that point. And I'm sure just because you are in this business and thinking about like other crews that have had to respond to something like what just happened in Texas, that it's it just must be so frustrating to hear the possibility of communication being yet another hurdle that they had to face in such a difficult situation. Communications are always difficult. I mean, as a res first responding agency, we are coming in as problem solvers. So we are organizing chaos. I mean, if you can put yourself in the shoes of the folks that were on that incident, these people are fearing for their lives. I mean, um, they are doing everything they can to just get out of harm's way. And so when you're as a first responder coming into that, when everybody else is running away from that, communications are always gonna be somewhat of an issue. So that's why we have these tools in our toolbox to help decrease that likelihood of having some of those communications breakdowns. Um, but that's there's always gonna be uh, a struggle to maintain that, that uh, the, the communications on those incidents and making sure those are running fluid. Alrighty, thank you so much for your insight about how a situation would work here. And of course, we all hope that nothing like that comes to our area.